Your Mental Health Matters, Positive Mental Health Week on Tip FM. Where is an organisation that is helping to defeat depression and indeed create a better understanding of depression? Delighted to be joined online now by the PR person for AWARE in Ireland, Sandra Hogan. Hello, Sandra. How are you? Hello, Fran. I'm great. Thank you. And uh, thank you for making time for us uh, today. Just just give us the background to AWARE. What exactly does your organisation do? Well, AWARE is a national organisation. First of all, I suppose it's important to point that out to people. Uh, we provide support, information and education services around depression. And as we all know, depression is a very common condition. It affects a lot of people in Ireland today. We would estimate that more than 400,000 people in Ireland experience depression at any one time. So that's quite a significant number. And when you think of, you know, not just the individuals who are affected, but also family members, friends, colleagues and so on, who might be trying to support a loved one through depression, it affects an awful lot of people. So it's very important that there's an organisation like AWARE providing information and support around the topic. Now, you're all around the country, um, I believe. Um, We are. And is is it a place where people can go and just drop into is that is that how it works well what the services that we provide i'll just run through them uh, quickly with you fran yes, we please. have support groups that meet in locations throughout the country um including one in thurlis uh, which meets every wednesday at eight o'clock in the presentation primary school mm-hmm. there in thurlis um now people can go along to that support group as and when they please there's no need to uh, register for it in advance and there's no need to be referred to the service either um we also have a helpline which is open 365 days a year and we have an email support service which again people can access whenever they want to and we uh, promise a response within uh, 24 hours or the next working day Um, so as well as those we have recently set up new online support groups too and I suppose the reason why we particularly set up the online support groups is in order to meet people where they're at and to provide support in a more accessible way maybe for people who are a little bit shy about going on to a face-to-face group or perhaps even in some cases people can find it very hard to pick up the phone and actually talk to somebody. So the online support groups are there for that reason. And all of the services, the helpline, the email and the support groups are very much about providing a safe, confidential space for people to talk through their particular concerns and to explore options that are available to them. One of the things that we know about depression is that it can be quite a dark place for people. And when you're in the darkness, that depression often brings it can be very very hard to see any hope for the future and it can be very hard to see what options are available to you and what aware would say is that there are always always options available and i suppose what the organization really facilitates is a shining shining the light on those options that are available to people um in the experience of aware what what causes depression i realize it's a big question but i mean what what causes it do you think Sandra? it is a big question and um, i suppose there's a number of different uh, factors involved Um, For some people, it could be a traumatic life event that happens, Mm -hmm. and so a depressive episode is triggered. So when we talk about a traumatic life event, it could be something like a bereavement, where the bereavement process or the grieving process doesn't happen in the the usual way. For other people, it might be loss of a job. Of course, that's something that's very significant at this time, because unfortunately, so many people have lost their jobs in the last um, 18 months to two years. Um, Financial concerns can be a trigger for a depressive episode and bullying or relationship difficulties can be triggers as well. For other people then, uh, they may have an innate tendency towards depression and again, it can be something that happens in their life that triggers the episode. So it really depends, I suppose. Some people can have Mm. a tendency towards depression, others may not necessarily have that tendency, but something very traumatic happens to them and so they, it results in a depressive episode. So so there may be a genetic element to this? There can be um, in some cases. I think that would be particularly relevant with bipolar disorder, which is a particular type of mood disorder, um, similar to depression in that it does involve the depressive episodes where the symptoms would be similar for the more regular types of depression, so feeling low, anxious, 
um, sleep disturbance, perhaps having difficulty getting to sleep at night, uh, maybe um, impact on appetite, um, on enjoyment of um, family life, work life and that kind of thing. Mm. So they would be all typical symptoms of a depressive episode. But in bipolar, as well as those depressions, there would also be the opposite, which are known as high periods or elations. Yes. Um, bipolar has been in the news a little bit recently because a couple of weeks ago there, Catherine Zeta-Jones, who of course will be familiar sure. to, I'm sure, all of your listeners, yes. um, announced that she had experience of bipolar disorder and she had re- recently been treated for it. So with bipolar disorder, there would be more of a genetic tendency. Um, so where bipolar is present in a family, there would be an increased risk um, of a person experiencing bipolar. But again, it doesn't always follow through the generations. It's just something to bear in mind. Where, where depression is concerned, how does it differ from, I mean, everybody gets a down day, Sam, mm. or, you know, you might even have a few days where you're feeling miserable and you you know flu-like symptoms what is the difference between depression or clinical depression and that well i suppose that's probably the real problem in terms of uh, people actually recognizing that depression is a factor for them and seeking help for it yes you're absolutely right in saying that we all experience you know down periods there are ups and downs in everybody's life Mm. and that's absolutely par for the course there's no getting away from it but um i suppose you know a person might have difficulty sleeping for a few nights, um, but generally there mightn't be other symptoms associated with depression happening alongside that. So what we would say is that there are eight main symptoms associated with depression, Mm. and where a person experiences five or more of them for a period of two weeks or more, that's when it could be indicative of a depressive episode, and they should seek further advice for it. Um, And I would just say people can log on to our website, which is aware.ie, and go through the symptoms there and maybe just try to think about their own situation and see if it might be something that's a factor for them because it can be very hard to, you know, decide where that line between a normal down and a depression, you Mm. know, is is um is happening sure. so it can be difficult but i suppose the thing with depression is that it's more enduring in nature and the symptoms are more enduring the person doesn't get any respite from them according to your own stats uh, f- over four hundred thousand people in ireland experience depression at, at any one time how, do you know how how we compare to others is there something about the irish is there something about the weather is there is there something there that that is intrinsic to it um, not really in terms of depression, I suppose we would be quite um, uh, equal in terms of Western Europe. Yes. Um, now, I know that there would be differences in terms of Asia and so on. You know, there would be um, some question there as to whether a better diet and better lifestyle and so on does have an impact. And mm. I think it is important to realize that, you know, our physical health um, and our physical well-being is very important in terms of our mental health, too. Sure. It's very important that we eat a nutritious diet, not just for our physical health, but for our mental health too. Getting regular exercise, all of those things do have an impact on our me- mental health as well. Mm. Um, so, I, you know, I think that we are uh, sort of part, equal in terms of Western Europe uh, for the prevalence of depression. Mm. But where, where there is a little bit more of a problem, I suppose, is in terms of the suicide rates, and particularly in relation to uh, suicide among young people and young men specifically. Um, we do have a very high suicide rate in this country and it's something that I suppose is linked in some way to uh, mental health issues because where a mental health issue is present particularly where it's not recognized and they're not therefore not treated it can unfortunately uh you know, get to a stage where the person feels like suicide is the way out for them. So that's why it's so important to get get help at an early stage. I was also uh, rather surprised, and I'm not sure why I was surprised to read, that women are three to four times more likely to experience depression than than men, Sandra. Mm. Mm. Yes, and that's another um, one, I suppose, that is uh, of particular note. Now, we're not sure of the reason behind that, um, whether or not it's due to a genetic difference or whether women are more likely to come forward for help and therefore show up more in the statistics. Mm. Um, So it's quite a difficult one. I suppose more research does need to be done in that area. And the postnatal depression, would that that account for some of it? Um, It would account for some of it, but Mm. uh, postnatal depression isn't a hugely uh, common condition. Um, I think the the generally accepted estimate there would be about 15% of women will experience um, postnatal depression symptoms. So, you know, it's not massively um, influencing the, the numbers of women, I suppose, who experience depression, uh, mm. but it's important 
nonetheless. All right. Uh, uh, just just finally, Sandra, what what would you say uh, to people out there who might be suffering or suffering alone or feeling that they need to stay silent about their feelings? What what advice would you give? Well, I think that the most important thing that I could say is that getting help might seem like the most difficult step, but it's actually the easiest option. Um, you know, if you allow a depressive episode to continue, it just has a bigger impact on your life in terms of, you know, if you have a job, it makes it harder to go into work every day. Um, if if you have, uh, you know, family around you, it does impact on family relationships and so on. So it's really so important to get help, to acknowledge that something is going on for you and to get help for it. Because the majority of people who come forward um, with depression will actually recover from it. So, you know, while it is a very common illness and while it can be distressing for a lot of people, there is an awful lot of hope there as well. It is possible to come through it. Just reach out for the help that's available. There's no need to be ashamed about it. There's no need to feel that there's something intrinsically wrong with you as a human being because you're feeling like this. It can happen to any one of us at any time in our lives. So there's no need for you to be ashamed or embarrassed. If you find it easier to log onto our website and get more information there, take that as your first step. But just take the first step. Thanks for talking to us, Sandra. Your Mental Health Matters, Positive Mental Health Week on Tip FM.